Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you today at online matchmaking meeting organized by um, the West Pomeranian ICT cluster and Viteno uh, Science and Technology Park in Greifswald. The meeting is organized uh, as a part of the project development of uh, Polish-German cross-border cooperation. On behalf of uh, West Pomeranian ICT cluster, I would like to welcome you here. Uh, my name is Magdalena Ławicka and I'm a Chief Operating Officer uh, at the cluster. Today's uh, meeting is uh, focused on uh, German-Polish cooperation. Um, and I hope that uh, by the end of the workshop, we all know uh, how to start cross-border cooperation and with whom to talk about it. Uh, I would like to introduce, can you hear me? <laughs> I should yes. ask it before, I guess. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, so I would like to introduce the interpreter, uh, Kamil Krzywicki. Hello, Kamil. Hello. Kamil will be with us all the time, uh, giving us support uh, in some language challenges. Uh, and I would like to introduce um, Rafał Maluida, who is going to be a moderator at uh, today's meeting. Rafał Maluida is a member of the board of uh, IT cluster. Uh, thank you, Ma uh, Magda. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm uh, very happy that we have an opportunity to, to meet today and discuss all these topics. And we have uh, a, a task for today. Uh, to this task, I believe we will revert back during our meeting and Magda will summarize it uh, as a prospects on the new steps and workshops. Uh, so, so I'm um, very interested in this issue, how we will deal with this task. So um, welcome everybody once again. Thank you, Magda. And I uh, give you back the voice, uh, let's say. So uh, you will now discuss welcome and introduction of the project. Thank you, Rafał. So I'm going to share my screen and share with you my presentation. Okay, I hope it is visible. Is it? Yes, it yes. was. Okay, thank you. So um, let me start my presentation with the uh, overall view of, uh, of the project. Uh, today's meeting um, takes place as a part of the project uh, development of Polish-German uh, cross-border cooperation. Uh, the project is co-financed by the European Union from the European Regional Development Fund and the state um, budget. Um, the great uh, value of the project is uh, our cooperation with uh, Viteno, uh, Science and Technology Park in Greifswald. And uh, I would like to take this uh, opportunity and uh, thank uh, Dr. Wolfgang Blank, Managing Director, and Alexander Schwok, uh, International Project Manager, for our cooperation, successful cooperation, I guess, so far. So thank you. When it comes to the when it comes to the project, uh, the main goals are, uh, the, are to um, achieve a better understand, understanding of the German and Polish cooperation needs, um, collect information about uh, organizations. Uh, test, test. Excuse me? I'm Can sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, Magda. <laughs> okay, so I can continue, I guess. <laughs> Sure, sure. Um, so, um, yes, collect information about uh, organizations supporting cross-border cooperation, um, as well as uh, to acquire um, competences needed for future effective uh, cross-border cooperation, uh, resulting in uh, jointly work out the concept for further cross-border cooperation, uh, which is going to be uh, as an as a e-book, I mean the main result of the project. Uh, so now I would like to uh, introduce uh, um, West Pomeranian ICT cluster. Um, so we are uh, the association. We associate uh, over 80 IT companies uh, from West Pomeranian region. And our objective is to facilitate uh, business relations between uh, ICT companies, um, education institutions, and the local government in the West uh, Pomeranian region. Um, the cluster helps uh, companies uh, acquire knowledge and expand uh, business contacts. 
uh, also to develop uh, international uh, cooperation. Uh, my role uh, is to support uh, dynamic development of the IT sector in the West Pomerania, uh, Western Pomerania, uh, provide companies with uh, space for um, sharing knowledge uh, and experience for their further uh, development. Uh, to initiate cooperation between um, businesses and institutions, um, provide to companies some networking opportunities and um, seek potential partners for um, business ventures. Um, Cluster enables uh, building partnerships and uh, cooperation with uh, IT companies um, by using the internal uh, cluster system which is the, um, the internal um, email channel for ordering uh, needs from the market when it comes to um, ICT competences. Uh, cluster, uh, IT cluster also um, provides um, safe cooperation uh, with partners already verified by other uh, cluster companies. Uh, and also, um, IT cluster makes a recommendation on combining the ICT resources and uh, also makes business recommendations to whom uh, address the needs of the market. Um, uh, so this is um, when it comes to companies belonging to a cluster. Uh, the companies develop uh, a variety of technologies in the uh, following areas, uh, fintech, automotive, and uh, digital. And uh, many uh, services and products uh, have been developed and launched on the global market uh, so far, not only on local or regional, uh, but also on global market. Um, the vast majority of uh, companies uh, develop uh, the following uh, services, ICT consulting, uh, custom software development, multimedia, VR and AR technology, and also cybersecurity. Uh, among our companies in the cluster, um, there are some with uh, German capital or um, those who provide services um, to the um, German market. Uh, let me give you just a few examples. Uh, the company Rynet uh, specializes in the architecture, implementation, and uh, operation of all activities related to application lifecycle management. The company um, Avid Technology, company with American capital, provides uh, services for German television, German TV, and also for German army. Uh, for example, company CodeLab um, provides services for, uh, for the following, um, let's say, sectors. Automotive, uh, banking and insurance, uh, energy, healthcare, um, and telecommunication and also many other companies uh, with uh, extensive uh, experience uh, in operating uh, on the German market. So um, if you look for business partners, contractors, or service products providers, or you are willing to create a global product with uh, international teams, and you are searching for skills, creativity, and know-how, uh, for sure, uh, IT cluster is the right contact to uh, facilitate the cross-border uh, cross cooperation. Um, so I hope that uh, today's meeting will help us in the development of uh, future joint uh, projects. Yes, and that uh, brings me to the end of my presentation, so I can give the voice to uh, Rafa Maluita. Uh, thank you very much, Magda. I believe that this presentation describe the potential of uh, the ICT cluster and now I have uh, an opportunity to welcome uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Lee Wolfgang Blank, Managing Director of Viteno, who will also introduce his perspective from the side of Viteno. Welcome. Yes, uh, thank you Rafael and thank you uh, Magda for uh, the cooperation, for the invitation and I think uh, it's, a, it's a good step in these difficult times to kind of, uh, yeah, uh, elaborate together the, the ways how we can further grow together, develop together. And uh, it's so clear that in, in your 
hub uh, in your metropolitan region, there's so much going on. So this is spreading to the surroundings and also to the German part. And this is very good to see. And on the other hand, uh, I, I think uh, you, you have already, you mentioned it, uh, close contacts to German partners. So that's a good, uh, fruitful collaboration. So I'm very happy uh, that we, we can do it together. And I'm also speaking, you know it, I'm, I'm responsible here for the Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is regularly all, already cooperating, but this is a little bit more specific. It's about specific topics. And uh, um, so I, I think it's a good uh, complementary uh, collaboration we have here. And this is just a short introduction. So our job here is that we run this uh, science and technology park in Greifswald, which is similar to the techno park in Szczecin on a smaller scale. Greifswald is pretty much smaller. But anyhow, we call ourselves the Adlershof of the Baltic coast because we have uh, uh, we are 20,000 square meters, so which is something. So we have different focus areas which we are working on, and um, so our our business is a little bit similar to what you are doing. So we are not representing the whole cluster of IT companies, but but we are at the borderline between. On the on one hand, these more scientific institutions like university research institutions, and uh, we are fostering the the space for them, but we are also fostering and helping them with transfer and with business development and with startup development. And uh, so there we have, uh, of course, the, the, the services which are related to our premises, to the infrastructure, to the spaces, what we, what we call scalable space. But we are very much uh, uh, collaborating with the startups. We are helping them to get into contact with businesses in the region, but also beyond. And I think uh, that's that's a very interesting topic in digitalization for the future. We are also helping, and there we are similar. So, Alexander, thank you that you promoted this project very much together with Magda. Um, we are also looking for European funds, which are uh, provided for these topics. And what we all do together, I think there we are very similar. We, we do community building. So we bring people from different areas together, and we try also somehow sometimes to translate not not the language i'm sorry my polish is lousy or even not existent yeah but we are trying to to help to help to to translate from the needs of a normal businessman in a normal manufacturing company to that of a, a startup company or to that of a scientist and even to a governmental person uh, which is pretty uh, important now i think also in these pandemic uh, times so uh, we are a member of the initiative of digital innovation hubs in uh, Mecklenburg-Vorpommern. My colleague will present this in the session, in the German part, not in the German, in the second part of the session. Uh, late, we have a real big program to get today. Uh, so we are very happy that uh, we, are, we are one of the six uh, digital innovation hubs here. So we are closely connected to our IT cluster as well, uh, which is growing. We have... Uh, some 70 companies, uh, more than 20,000 employees, which is not yet so big, but this is just the directly employees. So there are many employees, for example, in the university hospital or in the government or in bigger institutions, um, of course, also due to the pandemic times. So very much looking forward. And we see it as a first step today, uh, just as we have two parts, I will present our activities a little bit longer later in the second part. Um, we will have a big uh, digitalization conference in June, beginning of June. This is just for the people who are now in the first part, uh, save the date, and we, we will be happy, of course. And I think we will meet there and also on the Polish side as well. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Blank. This was a very interesting presentation. Oh, I hope that we are all aware uh, of the potential of both sides of the projects. And now we are uh, going forward. This time I will, uh, I would like to present you a few words about um, the legal perspective of doing business on both sides of the border. I will share my presentation. <clears throat> And it shall not be boring. Please excuse me, Rafał. Mm -hmm. Just one additional information because uh, I guess there are some questions about uh, the interpreter. Uh, so we are not going to use additional channel for interpretation. 
so if you have any questions, uh, Camille can, uh, I, I guess Camille can uh, um, answer the question and uh, um, make it the interpretation for us. But uh, um, let's say official language of the meeting is English. Okay. So I understand that if there are any questions, they uh, shall be directed to you or Camille. Yes, please. Well, okay. I won't be able to answer the questions, but I'll be able to interpret them, both for <laughs> German and Polish. Yes, that's what I okay. meant. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we encourage to, to send questions to Camille directly. I believe it will simplify uh, the whole procedure, let's say. Okay, a uh, question from my side. Uh, is my presentation now uh, seen uh, in whole? Yes, it is. Okay, great. So um, my name is Rafa Maluida. Once again, I'm an attorney at all and a patent attorney. Um, I mm, run a... Mm, law office both on the German and on the Polish side and that's why I'm very interested let's say in supporting this project and cooperating within the framework of this project because I'm, uh, I'm feeling and I see that this uh, cooperation is booming let's say the things I see on this uh, Polish and German, uh, German side I mean, the whole Euro region, uh, including Brandenburg, it's, it's booming and I, I'm really enjoying um, the possibility to be the part of it. Uh, we are um, a boutique law office focused on uh, IT industry, new technologies and doing business, especially in the EU, uh, uh, and especially in, on the German and on the Polish side. Uh, we also assist Scandinavian UK companies, so we have uh, really broad experience. Uh, but as said, uh, we are focused on this IT sector um, and uh, new uh, new technologies. We had also opportunities to uh, meet partners from academia with business, and uh, uh, it's also, I believe, a good field to. Mm, a good field of cooperation also within the framework of this uh, project. I was uh, considering this issue that I could briefly summarize during our uh, meeting from legal perspective. Um, of course, I couldn't uh, describe or summarize all the issues, all the relevant issues, but I believe that I have uh, uh, dealt with uh, the main topics. Uh, first of all, uh, the company that wish to cooperate or, or uh, enter into the market on this, uh, um, in Poland or, or in Germany should consider whether it sh should be uh, a separate legal form or could we use uh, a provision of services with, within the EU. And in my opinion, um, the, the second possibility, so uh, using this uh, EU framework of, provide, of provision uh, the services, uh, also in the transborder uh, dimension, uh, is a very good starting point because uh, setting up a um, company um, is challenging and uh, to some extent costly. And, uh, especially in the IT, um, IT sector, we are privileged, let's say, to work uh, in, um, to, to, to work not on the side of the client, but to cooperate via internet. So uh, the presence, uh, visible or physical presence on the, on the other market, it's not so important, but of course, uh, it should not be forgotten, especially when our um, activity evolves and, and is getting bigger. Um, regarding the cost issues, uh, there are uh, or there is a um, difference between Polish and uh, German initial costs of setting up a company. Uh, the most chosen um, companies in case of Germany is uh, Gesellschaft mit Beschränkter Haftung. It's a limited uh, liability company, the same as Spółka z Ograniczoną Odpowiedzialnością 
uh, uh, in, on the Polish side. Uh, in case of uh, setting up a company in German, we shall uh, have a capital of around about 12,500 euros. And in Poland, we are obliged to pay it in a minimum capital at the level of 5,000 zloty. Uh, so this uh, uh, entry, um, um, entry conditions uh, are slightly different, but of course, we shall uh, also bear in mind the location of our employees and their taxation. According to the 183 days rule, uh, our employees can be taxed uh, in the companies, uh, in the place where they uh, provide services or in the place uh, where they mostly live. It's uh, mm, it's an issue that could have an impact on our cash flow and uh, at the end of the day of turnover where our employees are being taxed uh, so it's um, also a question to uh, to consider before entering the second market and uh, it's not a legal let's say condition but I have encountered it in many cases uh, in case of companies working in group companies um, uh, that we should also uh, verify what are the expectations of our client because it uh, might be the case that our client wish that all our employees are located in the jurisdiction in which we are set up. So uh, it's, as said, not a legal condition from the perspective of legal provisions, but uh, we have to verify um, potential contract with potential uh, cooperation partner, because uh, it might be the case that we shall not be able to include into our team cooperating with such a partner um, people located in different jurisdictions and uh, working with us via internet. Uh, regarding the place of the taxation of income of the company, it's also a very important issue, uh, both from the income tax perspective and from the uh, turnover tax perspective. And uh, it's uh, mm, a little bit the, the issue linked with the first one I, uh, I described. So if we choose to set up an office or a branch uh, in, the other, uh, in the other country, it might be the case that tax authorities uh, shall assume that we are so active in, this second, uh, uh, in the second market that we shall be there taxed both from the uh, income tax and, and uh, turnover tax perspective. And it might uh, be the case that at the end of the day, uh, we shall register our company for the tax purposes in, uh, in tax office of this uh, uh, second country. Um, from practical perspective, um, practical experience from German market, it's good to check company's name at the local chamber of industry and commerce. It uh, um, simplifies and, and speeds the whole procedure. Uh, we have uh, Adam Grandjak that, that, uh, that from Haus der Wirtschaft uh, and also combined with uh, IHK. Uh, so, uh, industry and uh, handelskammer uh, that um, provides such uh, services, and uh, it, it might be seen or perceived as a very minor issue, but uh, from the practical perspective, I must say that that uh, if uh, excluded from our plan or to-do list uh, when setting up a company in Germany or subsidiary or, or, or branch office, uh, it might. Uh, cause um, time waste in terms of two, three months. Um, the companies that co start cooperating with the partner abroad are uh, also considering how our expectations or, or 
um, payments could be secured. And of course, it, it's simple to say or, or uh, present all the legal possibilities to secure payments under the contract, uh, especially when we start cooperation. But um, all in all, there is a question um, how strongly to, to negotiate at the very beginning and uh, what may cause uh, problems in concluding a contract. And I would, um, from practical, uh, practicable side, uh, recommend to have uh, or bear in mind mostly two solutions. So retainer in terms of payments, uh, of advanced payments, and reservation of title in terms of copyright and intellectual property uh, until we receive our payments. I believe that uh, such simple solutions are uh, the best. They shall not break our uh, potential or starting cooperation. Um, on the other side, we can, of course, think about more, more advanced solutions, but uh, I would uh, leave them um, for more specific contracts or large scale contracts, large scale cooperation. Um, as a brief introduction, as uh, everything that I wanted to present you, uh, I believe that it's uh, um, that gives you an uh, overview uh, what kind of issues we should be aware of when entering into the uh, uh, market in, uh, on the other side. And uh, right now, I would like to welcome Ms. Agnieszka Van Hoeven, uh, representing Förder und Entwicklungsgesellschaft uh, for Pomern Greifswald, uh, aus Passewalk, from Passewalk. So, Agnieszka, floor is right now yours. Hello, I hope you can hear me. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, so the first thing which I will do is to share my screen. Okay, so I stopped my share. Okay. Okay, it works. Yes. Yes, it works. Okay, great. Um, I'm happy to hear that. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, good afternoon to you all. And uh, I would like to thank you on behalf of FAG. Uh, so, it means Forum und Entwicklungsgesellschaft, Stowarzyszenie dla Współpracy i Rozwoju Regionu Powiatu Fopomen Greifswald w Języku Polskim, for this invitation to participate in this uh, evening. My name is Agnieszka van Hoeven. And um, I'm pleased to present my company um, and I am working as a project manager and also uh, work on German-Polish uh, cooperation in um, the Szczecin metropolitan area. Our company, FEG, uh, means Association uh, for Promotion and Development of Open and Greifswald, the district. And it's based in Pazewalk only 40 kilometers from the Stettin city center um, uh, of district uh, Popham and Greifswald. Um, and this district borders directly on Poland and was Pomerania. FEG has been in business for more than 20 years. And our profile is of all support of existing companies and, even, and um, to support local business, organization, and co-organizations um, of business and economic events, include German Polish events. And to work uh, on the creation and networking of context, mutual support, business, and our um, Bundesland and to support the companies which are thinking of settling in our district. So we do not specialize in just one sector. I know that this, uh, at this uh, event is dedicated to just especially one sector, but 
we currently are operating, cooperating in the following sector as food, bioeconomy, recycling, and digitalizations, and many others. So we are really open uh, for any ideas, any businesses, uh, any companies which would like to start a cooperation with us. Um, and then we are just for you. This, this is important. We have contacts to local authorities, councils, local companies. We uh, facilitate access to services, create networks, present investment plots, and uh, we are just for your needs, the needs of the investor. Um, what to say more, I'm sorry. Um, we represent as well the investment park Berlin and Stettin and Pasewalk, uh, which is total of 156 hectares of investment land. Recently, we have to had the pleasure to, uh, um, to, to make a settlement of a large company, Toprigal. And currently, we are working on supporting the settlement uh, of the one of the largest companies in Europe in the sector of uh, digital information storage and passival. But I can't right now tell you the, the name of, of, this, of this company. Um, so we cooperate as well with the Polish producer exporting healthy foods uh, to Asian markets, which group and the plant A, which is Scandinavian company. Polish uh, group cut, but also with Stettin Stalboot, and we are really proud of it. So, uh, and many others. So, uh, we uh, have to offer, and we, we can offer the investments um, and, um, and investment areas in Anklam, Grafburg, Kloitz, Volgas, and many other locations in our districts. Um, we also uh, work international, internationally in Poland and in Israel, Switzerland, Austria, Netherlands, Ukraine, cooperating with companies and bringing together the uh, regi regional um, interests and investments, investors. Our district is still characterized by large avail avail uh, availability of uh, good investment areas but i will say still because it changes all the time um, if you will see in german for example as i wrote here in munich we have uh, the price about 500 euros per square meter in our district we offer still six six euros per square meter so it means uh, the interest in our offer is really quite big um, and um, well so um, we as well setting um, um, the companies and having access to various support com uh, programs, including those of this, uh, from European Union. In our district uh, are the subsidies the highest in Germany, up to 40% for small business, which is, which is, uh, which is still actual. So uh, for small enterprises. Okay, and I would like to say uh, we are just creating and organizing many events, as I said before. Uh, as as an example, it will be in June. For example, um, we 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 organize together with uh, the Tagus Eagle, um, the event uh, with the name Berlin Think Bigger. It's a uh, hybrid conference, uh, which is partly public and partly online. Or, for example, bioeconomy conference, uh, which will be um, made um, presented for the fourth time in Amplam. This is a big thing as well, and which will um, be presented in autumn uh, this year. So, as a shortcut, that's all. Uh, so, this is what we are doing mostly. It's supporting the companies which would like to. Uh, invest in uh, um, Popham and Greifswald district, and 
this as our team, the people who are working, cooperating with you, maybe will be. And uh, yes, you are very welcome to follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on our shows, social medias. And I'm Agnieszka van Hoeven, and thank you for that I have an occasion to present uh, Shortly, FEG uh, Foreign Entwicklungsgesellschaft, czyli Stowarzyszenie dla Wsparcia Rozwoju Regionu Popoman Grajza. Thank you very much. I hope it was quite fine. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much, Agnieszka. It was really interesting and impressing, especially from this field perspective that you offer as uh, FEG uh, in the region of Passowald. Uh, the name uh, is also quite impressive, so Berlin Szczecin uh, cooperation team, and I believe that, that for the companies itself uh, also the support issue is uh, very crucial or, or very interesting one, so, so thank you very much, and uh, I see that because you mentioned your team, and I see that we are right now building, uh, to some extent, a team of organizations and companies uh, trying to cooperate together. Uh, we had already ICT cluster, thereafter Viteno, uh, right now you as FEG. Uh, we await also for uh, Investor Center uh, Ukemark. Uh, so, so I'm curious to see how we will cope with this task to facilitate uh, cooperation between companies um, and institutions in the region, uh, region because I, I see that we have uh, a great potential. Thank you very much, Agnieszka. Right now, I would like to welcome uh, Martin Kaczmarek. He is the CEO of um, Concilion, a limited liability company located in Szczecin, but uh, also related with a group of companies from Germany. Martin will explain it in, uh, in a second. And Martin is uh, simultaneously president of the board of ICT Cluster. Martin, you are with us? Yes, thank you for the introduction. Um, welcome to all. Uh, I will try to share with you some, some of my experiences related to cross-border cooperation uh, from the perspective of an, of an IT company. And, in order to do that, I need to tell you a bit about what we do as Consilium. So, uh, Consilium uh, is a group that was started in Castro in 2001. This is when, where I, when I actually joined it as software developer. I, I worked on projects and lived in Frankfurt, uh, Essen, Köln, spent there a few years. And today, the result is within the group, we, we have all, almost 500 people employed. There are 16 office locations in Europe, uh, including some in Austria, uh, Switzerland, Ukraine. And for the uh, 15 years, I'm happy to run a Polish branch of Consilium Group. Uh, what we've managed uh, is accomplishing over 150 joint projects where German and Polish team work together. So I believe I can share with you some of my experiences. As in general, Consilium does a lot of consulting from strategy through process and IT. And then there's often a need to do some custom software development. And this is where the Polish branch plays a very important role for the whole group. And together we managed to work for a number of the clients you see here on this slide. You will hear later that number of these big brands that many of you can recognize uh, have already experienced a uh, joint collaborations of German and Polish team. Okay, why German companies do that? Uh, why do they approach us? It very often starts with a recruiting that fails on their side, or they, they learn that, okay, freelancers are good, but they don't really scale, or the local vendors are simply... Uh, recruiting on the same uh, market like they are and often are simply too expensive. So they come to us asking uh, for some manpower that would come outside of their uh, local market. And then uh, they often say, we have big plans. So we need to scale it easily. So we need to be in a country where this is possible. Then, very often, once they see the budgets, they, they hope that they will simply have 
cheap Polish developers uh, recruited or contracted here. Uh, then last thing is when building their products, they think, okay, when building it uh, with uh, some global teams, we will be able to later on sell it here in Poland, which is a country of 36 million people. So that's also one of the reasons why they come. However, how this uh, looks like in reality? Uh, well, I can't promise you more miracles, but uh, the experience from the customers uh, we've moved into this near shoring model and that's over 20 uh, german brands is that it it's tough it's not easy to start but surely it's worth it so the the conclusion is usually that they get more than they expected at first and more is uh, i will tell you this in details um what they very often learn is uh well we do have a lot of one of an army type of people here in our IT. Why? Because uh, Polish developers are really educated in a bit different way than in West Europe. Uh, then uh, on, in general, on average, they are really way more skilled than uh, a lot of developers you find across Europe. So like Germans are famous for their automotive business. Uh, it's the Poles that are famous for the IT sector. Second thing is, uh, excuse me, I hear some noise in the background. Okay. The second reason would be that due to our history, uh, we have this really uh, problem solving skills and a lot of creativity. And this thinking outside the box helps to solve uh, many project problems. So this is really appreciated uh, by the customers. Then, uh, it's again sort of unique, but there's a lot of passionate people uh, about IT. So they work really hard. They broaden their skills on a daily basis after hours. So uh, they are, thanks to that, they are, let's say, way more up to date with technologies than you will find in many other countries. And uh, unlike in Germany, in, in Poland, the IT sector is extremely booming, which also means that uh, it's the, the salaries for Polish, for example, dev software developers are way more, way higher than average salary in Poland. It's sometimes a few times higher than the salary. Therefore, uh, I can say that, well, Polish developers are surely not cheap. So you can't really look at the, just the rates. It's the value for money that matters here. And that's why there are so many companies from all over the world, uh, a lot of US brands, a lot of European brands coming here to either start a business, a branch here in Poland or uh, contract companies from Poland because they know it's worth it. But if, if we go further, then uh, from this near shoring cooperation, there are also other add on values that uh, we bring to the products. So once you get into such talks, you quite often learn that, uh, well, there's already a lot of know-how here among the Polish vendors about how to work with German customers. And actually, I would bet with many of you that you would be surprised that a lot of your competitors is already working with some uh, sort of uh, Polish help. And you would be surprised of how many of software in your bank, in your car, in your mobile phone is already made here. So uh, thanks to this experience already made by Polish vendors, you can, uh, it's way easier to start with the new customers from Germany. Then uh, here in Szczecin, it's also quite unique that we have a number of people exactly like me who have the, this working and living experience from Germany, which of course makes uh, communication a lot easier. Then, because uh, of that, it's easier to integrate up, uh, integrate uh, us with your internal team. And another thing is, because we we live and work in a really similar way, we are sort of in the context. So we understand your business problems and the solutions that you have in mind. We can help on creating them also on a business level, which means that unlike the typical outsourcing relation where you have to really describe in details what you really want to achieve. 
and uh, there's like hundreds of pages of documentation in our projects we talk on a daily basis and are able to steer the scope of the projects in order so it fits the goal in the best way. It can really be innovative change and we are ready to handle something like this. Uh, then again, Szczecin is unique because for many German companies, it, it happens that there's sudden need of meeting the next day or even within the hour within some hours so that's doable not only for berlin but we had some cases where we had to travel to frankfurt uh, and mine uh, and this was doable to meet still in the same day so uh, then uh, what's really appreciated by a number of german companies is that polls are really good uh, in and up to date regarding modern technologies they learn from us how to use them. They learn from us how to improve the quality of the products. Why? Because thanks to working from companies from all over the world, we actually have a lot of best practices uh, in among our processes. So it's, it's worth to look at. Then I noticed a lot of companies who came just to have some developers here in Poland, but they, they turned uh, this relationships into long partner, long-term partnerships and often established a branches here in Poland on their own. The last thing is uh, that there's an option to use some companies who are already present both on Polish and German border uh, in, in, in Germany and in Poland and they offer the, these mixed teams together. So thanks to that you can contract a German company have often uh, German native, for example, business consultants, and then a lot of IT guys uh, from Poland. And this works very well uh, for a number of uh, German enterprises. Uh, yeah, how to start such cooperation? This is, this is usually, uh, let's say, the, the, one of the things to, to handle. And I would say, well, if you want to achieve something you, you haven't had before, then you really need to do something you haven't done before. So this needs some effort and this needs a mindset change. But uh, you need to have in mind that uh, in today's world, when the market is so uh, quick, it's this, this typical outsourcing relation between uh, a customer and a vendor do not, long, uh, do not really uh, provide enough. So. You need this agility, and this is allowed by this nearshoring cooperation where you can create these joint teams, uh, where, where both of these joint teams can share one goal and understand each other and commit to this goal. And uh, they can collaborate and talk on a daily basis. And there's a transparency because of the trust built over time. Uh, so uh, how... Uh, about other best practices. What, what I learned is when starting such collaboration, you should assume that there will be changes. So you should name your goals, but don't really stick to the way you planned for it at first. So be prepared to change. Do not prevent the change. It's usually better to have as a result something different than what you originally thought. And it's usually a better result uh, that you, you had in mind at first. Then, if you think about the contract, I would say uh, uh, there are companies who would like to spend weeks on writing a proper contract, but it's way better to have this uh, tried out in practice. So have a contract that is quick to sign, but also quick to quit. And in practice, try your partner, see if he delivers, uh, you the, the results you are expecting him to, to deliver. Then having uh, having some emergency exit to fail fast. So uh, work on iterations. Check the results, for example, on weekly or biweekly basis. This will help you very quickly to learn if this is the right partner for you. And in order to protect you from something like a vendor lock be sure to take care of things like intellectual property rights of some paid know-how transfer phase that will be needed after the product is finished. 
and uh, for example, make your vendor to commit to your uh, code repository on a daily basis. So at all the time you have the full control of what they deliver. All right, uh, then uh, my tips would be also have the both teams from your company and Polish company meet together before you do any commitment. See if there's this chemistry or energy between them, give them some problems to solve and see how they react. Before you start, you need to prepare your teams and your internal environment to allow for this remote work. Then uh, always start the projects together to form really a, these joint teams. This helps to uh, build a communication that will be efficient all the way through the projects. If there's critical uh, uh, phases of the project uh, meet and select first the, the parts of the project that are easiest to start with in this new showing model. And once you do a success, celebrate it jointly. Okay, uh, there's a number of obstacles to consider, but that's a topic for another, uh, for another presentation. For me, uh, I encourage you to reach out to our cluster, uh, talk to Magda, we will help you to find the proper partner for you. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is my contact data, just in case you would like to have some more tips regarding starting this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Martin. It's good to have an uh, experienced partner on board. Uh, I like this idea of mixed uh, teams uh, working uh, together via uh, internet uh, in this remote uh, system, uh, because I, I see this in such a way that if somebody is located in a beautiful village in Mecklenburg, Vorpommern, or in Brandenburg, or uh, in Zachodnio Pomorskie, then, then it's uh, then really workable. Uh, okay, we have the next uh, speaker, Adam Grendiak. Uh, how's their Wirtschaft, the Dom Gospodarki, uh, somehow linked with the IHKSO Industry and Handelskammer? Uh, Adam, the floor is yours. Hello, dear ladies and gentlemen. Uh, our working languages are Polish and German. And uh, for me, it's better to switch to the German language. And this as far as I know, I will be translated by an interpreter. I also have a presentation. Sehr geehrte Damen und Herren, ich heiße Sie herzlich willkommen. Und freue mich darüber, Ihnen unser Haus der Wirtschaft in Stettin vorstellen zu dürfen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very glad to welcome all of you uh, to the House of Business in Stettin. Uh, wie bereits uh, Rafa Maluida sagte, uh, sind wir ein Projekt der Industrie- und Handelskammer Neubrandenburg und wir sind im Jahre 2000 in Stettin gegründet worden. As uh, Rafa Maruda already mentioned, we are the uh, Chamber of Industry and Commerce from uh, Neubrandenburg, and uh, we been founded in the year 2000 in Stettin. An dem Projekt Haus der Wirtschaft sind uh, auch viele andere Projektpartner beteiligt, die sich hier aufgelistet sehen. And you can see that there are many other partners listed uh, in the House of Business. Um, unser Aufgabenbereich liegt uh, in der Vermittlung von Kooperationspartnern, in der Beratung zu Handelskontakten und Firmengründungen. Our range of services covers the mediation between cooperation partners, advice on trade contacts and company foundations. Wir informieren auch über Messen und betreuen Firmen auf Messen, was jetzt zurzeit leider nicht möglich ist. We also inform about fairs and also arrange fairs, but currently it's not possible. Wir organisieren auch Themen und Branchen, branchenbezogene Veranstaltungen, um, we zum also, Beispiel. Yeah, okay. Sorry. We also organize thematic and industry related events. 
Yes, also zum Beispiel zum Thema Steuern, Firmengründungen in Polen. Uh, also about taxes or about uh, opening up a company in Poland. Wir informieren zu den Wirtschaftsstandorten entlang der Grenze, auch über die Rahmenbedingungen für ein wirtschaftliches Engagement und wir vermitteln Kontakte zu Behörden, Institutionen, Hochschulen oder Sonderwirtschaftszonen. Mm -hmm. We also inform about business locations along the border. We inform about the framework conditions for economic engagement and we arrange contacts or we facilitate contacts with authorities and institutions as well as with uh, schools and special economic zones. Seit über 20 Jahren betreuen wir deutsche und polnische Unternehmen und wie ich zu Anfang gesagt habe, ein unserer wichtigsten Bereiche ist die Vermittlung, die Firmenvermittlung im Rahmen einer Kooperationsbörse. And for 20 years now we are uh, aiding uh, German and Polish companies and we uh, provide uh, help with company placement within the framework of the German Polish online cooperation exchange. Unsere uh, Kooperationsbörse finden Sie eben auf der Internetseite der IHK Neubrandenburg oder auf der Internetseite des Hauses der Wirtschaft. Und ähm, auch viele Angebote äh, findet man auf dem Portal Stretching Business. You can find uh, information about uh, the companies uh, on the website of the Chamber of Commerce of Neubrandenburg, also on the website of the, um, uh, Uh, dom gospodarki, strona domu about, yeah, sorry, about uh, on the webpage of the House uh, of Business in Szczecin and also on the website szczecinbusiness.pl. Yes. Uh, seit kurzem erscheinen unsere Angebote ebenfalls auf Facebook. Uh, not long time ago, we also started publishing our offers on Facebook. Uh, jährlich vermitteln wir circa 750 Adressen. Einmal ist es mehr, mal weniger. Daraus sind aber schon sehr viele feste Kooperationen entstanden. Uh, on a yearly basis, we inform about 750 company addresses. And based on that, we have managed to establish many well-functioning cooperations. Das erste Beispiel, das ich hier genannt habe, ist die Gründung eines Distributionszentrums in Stettin und Poznan. Und dieses Unternehmen möchte demnächst auch auf die Region von Warschau expandieren. Uh, the first uh, element I'd like to mention is the establishment of the Crosstalk Distribution Center in Szczecin and Poznan by a uh, Neubrandenburg-based uh, trading company that would also like to extend its activities to the region of Warsaw. Um, Gerade um, wenn es um die Zusammenarbeit mit deutschen Firmen oder Firmen aus Mecklenburg-Vorpommern geht, haben wir auch sehr viele Kooperationen unterstützt im Bereich äh, zum Beispiel Zulieferung von Baustoffen, Profilblechen, Metallprodukten, Zäunen, Toren, aber auch Pflanzen. When talking about the cooperation with German companies or uh, companies from the Neubrandenburg, uh, from the sorry, from the Four Pommern region, uh, we uh, cooperate with many uh, uh, um, suppliers from from Poland and from German, and it's mostly about building materials, profiled uh, sh profiled uh, sheet metal, uh, metal products, fencing and gate systems, as well as plants. Ähm, andersrum, ähm, also die Kooperation von Deutschland nach Polen, die wir unterstützt haben, das sind zum Beispiel Firmen, die eben Transportsicherheitsnetze, Steinplatten und ebenfalls Baustoffe in Polen vertreiben. When we go the other way around, uh, supporting, I'm talking here about supporting the cooperation uh, between German and Polish company, uh, we can uh, to mention the trade representatives who are dealing with uh, um, transport safety nets, uh, stone slabs or building materials. Hier als Beispiel ein, ein deutsches Unternehmen, welches eben äh, 
Bleche aus Polen nach Deutschland export, importiert und in Deutschland vertreibt. This is an example of a Polish company that is uh, producing and exporting metal sheets uh, from uh, Poland to Germany. Wenn wir ein Unternehmen, egal ob aus Polen oder aus Deutschland, unterstützen, versuchen wir das immer sehr individuell anzugehen. Also wir haben keine maschinelle äh, Vorgehensweise, sondern wir setzen uns zusammen reden mit den Menschen, lernen sie kennen und dann versuchen wir ihnen dann natürlich zu helfen. When we deal with companies, we don't use the uh, mass approach, but we rather prefer a very individual approach. So when starting the cooperation, we always try to sit down with a business partner and talk to each other and learn more about the businesses. Ein weiterer um, Aufgabenbereich des Hauses der Wirtschaft ist Organisation von verschiedenen Kooperationstreffen, Seminaren, Schulungen, Unternehmerforen. The next area of activities of uh, the business, uh, House of Business is the organization of cooperation uh, meetings, seminars, business forums and uh, foundation stones for new events in Szczecin and the region. Yes, und folgende Events haben wir zum Beispiel von Beginn an unterstützt, so zum Beispiel die deutsch-polnischen Tage mit der Stadt Stettin. We have uh, been supporting the following events and uh, the first example is the German-Polish uh, days uh, with, in cooperation with the city of Stettin. Und uh, auch eine Kooperationsbörse Industrial Bridge mit dem Regionalzentrum für Innovation und Technologietransfer. There also uh, was a, um, um, so to say, uh, a stock exchange of uh, called Industrial Bridge uh, organized with the Regional Center for Innovation and Technology Transfer. Und die Industrial Bridge ist eine Kooperationsbörse für die maritime Wirtschaft, Metallindustrie, aber seit neuestem auch für Transport- und Logistikbranche. Die uh, Cooperation Stock Exchange ist eine Plattform für uh, Cooperation für die um, maritime Industrie, Metallindustrie und uh, recently auch für Logistik und Transportation. Seit vielen Jahren ähm, in Zusammenarbeit mit Enterprise Europe Network in Szczecin unterstützen wir auch ähm, eine Kooperationsbörse während der Messe Budgriff und Energia. Uh, for many years now uh, with uh, the Enterprise Europe Network in Szczecin, we are supporting the B2B um, matching fair, um, uh, Budgriff und Energia. Energia. Und gerade wenn es um die IT-Branche geht, hatten wir das Vergnügen gehabt, auch eine Firma aus Deutschland zu unterstützen, die im Rahmen der, des Ausbaus der Glasfaserinfrastruktur in Deutschland eben die äh, Kooperation mit polnischen Unternehmen gesucht haben. Das ist zum Beispiel die Firma Wir lieben Kabel gewesen. And we also had the pleasure to cooperate with IT companies from Germany dealing with fiber optics and uh, uh, to develop the infrastructure, infrastructure in the border region. And the um, uh, example of such a company was uh, Wir lieben Kabel, Wheel of Cable. Ja, und uh, seit vielen Jahren zusammen, in Zusammenarbeit mit dem Service- und Beratungszentrum der Pomerania in Pasenwald organisieren wir und unterstützen wir ebenfalls das deutsch-polnische Steuerseminar. And in cooperation with uh, the service and advisory organization from uh, Pomerania, we also um, support uh, the, we supported the German-Polish tax seminar in Pasenwald. Und hier haben Sie auch einige andere Beispiele von verschiedenen deutsch-polnischen Veranstaltungen, die wir unterstützen. You can see here a few other examples of um, German-Polish events that we support. Seit neun Jahren um, organisieren wir ebenfalls den deutsch-polnischen Wirtschaftskreis. 
Uh, Adam, one, uh, uh, excuse me, Adam, one remark uh, from my side. We are a little uh, bit beyond time. Uh, so please, one minute to summarize uh, and uh, we shall move forward. Thank you. I'm, I'm really uh, at the end. One minute. Also, seit, neun, mm -hmm, seit, neun Jahren, äh, seit 20 Jahren organisieren wir den deutsch-polnischen Wirtschaftskreis ähm, zu Wirtschaft und gesellschaftspolitischen Themen. Uh, for 20 years now we've been running a, a de German Polish uh, economic uh, circle uh, to enhance uh, the cooperation of Polish and German enterprises. Und so trafen wir uns auch schon bereits im Februar 2017 im Technopark Pomerania in Stettin. So we have met already in February 2017 uh, in the Metropolitan uh, Business Center in Stettin. Wir organisieren den Wirtschaftskreis auch on tour. Wir besuchen auch andere Unternehmen. Wir treffen uns im Hotel aber auch jetzt in der letzten Zeit online. We also uh, organize so-called road trips and we uh, meet in hotels and recently uh, online. Wir sind als Team drei Personen, haben den Sitz hier in Stettin und Sie können are, uns gerne besuchen. Wir helfen Ihnen bestimmt auch weiter. We are a team of three uh, with the, our headquarters in Stettin and you very welcome to visit us and we we'll definitely uh, help you along. Vielen Dank für Ihre Aufmerksamkeit. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Adam. I see that the 750 records of exchange uh, of contacts between the companies is a very great experience. And I believe that we can use this experience in facilitating uh, cooperation between the companies uh, here in our project. Uh, right, now, mm -hmm. uh, right now, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Robert Basilevich. Uh, he is regional director of Rainnet Poland. And he, his company and uh, he himself uh, has a, a great experience also in cooperation with German market. So uh, right now, please, uh, Mr. Boslevich, present uh, your perspective. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, very well. And we hear you very well also. Thank you. Um, so, hello and welcome to my session. Uh, my name is Robert Bazilevich, and uh, today I'm um, presenting um, a session about the cross-border um, cooperation of, of Reynet. Um, I'm a regional director and founder of uh, Reynet Polska. Um, if you have any questions, please use the chat function. I will answer um, to this question at the end of the presentation. Um, first of all, I would like to um, give you an overview of Raynet um, because it is essential for the rest of the story. Um, Raynet is a global software company with market leading solutions and it is a um, market managed service provider in the field of enterprise software management. Following the mission discover to manage Raynet offers the market unique products covering all technologies for enterprise software management. In addition to the headquarters in Paderborn, Raynet has other offices in Germany, uh, in USA, Poland, UK, Turkey, with more than 100 highly qualified employees. Raynet supports with its portfolio since 1999 well-known customers and partners worldwide with their projects from technology asset inventory and software asset management over software packaging and workflow management up to unified endpoint management. Raynet maintains strong partnerships uh, with the leading companies in this industry 
On the right, um, you can see a selection of our customers for whom we provide products and services also from our Polish branch in Szczecin. As you can see, these are companies mainly from Germany because yes, we are neighbors and it is obvious that we should take advantage of closeness in business relations too. Let me switch to the main topic, uh, which is cross-border cooperation. Um, Reynet Polska uh, was founded in the year 2010, but the plan for the Nearshore company came to my mind a few years earlier. When I was still studying at the German-Polish studies in business informatics, I was considering a career in international organization. The idea of cooperation across borders seemed very interesting for me. For several years, I was looking for the right employer in Germany and in Poland, and I concluded that it is best to set up an international company myself. And I did it in the year 2010, together with two business partners from Germany. Reynet Polska is a subsidiary company of Reynet GmbH, based in Paderborn, Germany. The main activities are managed services for the customers of Reynet and software development of our own products. We started in 2010 with three employees. Two of them work at Reynet until today. Now we have 25 employees. They are very well educated. 70% of them have university degree. Some of them, others are still studying. Over the years, we have successfully completed over 45 projects ourselves in application lifecycle management. And we also work on other joint projects together with colleagues from Reynet German branches. Now I'm going to present some use cases in order to explain to you what exactly we offer to our clients. For example, this customer provides among other software migration services. And we conducted a training program about application management lifecycle for him consisting of many modules so that the customer could carry out large scale migration projects on his own or with our support. We used um, Rayspec Studio and Rayflow products, products that we developed here in Szczecin. Another example from the automotive industry. Here we conducted an inventory of software and hardware assets with our software asset management tools so that unused software licenses could be deactivated and expenses are saved. This is an example from the metal industry where we have implemented optimized packaging and distribution process for applications in an environment spread out between Europe and North America. This allowed the customer to standardize its applications across all plants. And the last one, for this shipping company, we introduced our Ray Managed Soft Infrastructure Management software. This makes it possible, for example, to quickly update the application while the ship is at sea without having to stop until it's in harbor. The solution works great on ships that, as we know, do not have a very stable network connection. Let me summarize the benefits of our cross-border cooperation. In Szczecin, we have access to highly qualified employees, while in Germany, there has been a lack of people with the right IT education for many years. Lower labor costs in Poland increase the competitiveness of the entire organization. 
which makes it possible to carry out orders that would be unprofitable in Western Europe. Moreover, I have noticed our colleagues in Szczecin are very creative, very innovation oriented. It sounds like an anecdote, but when we realize how much our employees here can do, we created a research and development team, which at first was not at all planned in Szczecin, in Reynet Polska. Our Polish employees complement the skills that uh, colleagues from another location do not have. By creating joint project teams, we are stronger and we can carry out joint projects that we could not do alone. And last but not least, Szczecin has an attractive location due to its closeness to Germany. Of course, we do not visit our customers at the moment due to lockdown restrictions, but when the situation is under control, we will meet for visits events and this geographical closeness is a big advantage. If you have any questions for me, you can ask or contact me after the presentation. I will be happy to share my experiences because I believe that there are still many unused opportunities for joint German-Polish business operation. Thank you for the invitation to this event and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Robert. It was also a um, very inspiring presentation. And I'm happy to hear that we got another company on board that can support um, all of us in this uh, remote uh, approach. But also, um, I think that, that we can work remote, but simultaneously, we are so close in all those three regions participating in the project that indeed uh, this, this together uh, or mixing teams approach is really uh, workable. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, right now, I would like to welcome Mr. Jacek Wunczykowski is a director of uh, the Center for in Economic Initiatives in West Pomerania, Wojewodship. We have also long-standing uh, history of cooperation and we would be happy to hear how the center can support our uh, goals. Uh, welcome, Mr. Wojcikowski. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, it's true that uh, we've been quite uh, uh, we've had we've ha had a nice history of working together with uh, uh, the IT cluster of West Pomerania. We are very happy for for, for this nice gesture to invite us to this uh, presentation, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I know I only have ten minutes, and uh, I tried not to make my presentation too too technical because I know it's a long day for you, and you will you are going to absorb a lot of technical knowledge. So let me do. Uh, the, let's say the normal job that we do, that is to say a few words about ourselves, but also to attract you and uh, tell you a little bit about uh, West Pomerania and how nice a uh, region it is. Uh, so uh, as uh, Rafał has mentioned, uh, my name is Jacek Wojcikowski and it's going to be only worse later on because uh, also the um, uh, institutions that I am representing, uh, they have quite complicated names like uh, the Marshal's Office, sounds a little bit military, but it's not, we are part of the regional administration. And uh, uh, the name of this department uh, at the Marshal's Office is Center for Economic Initiatives. That's, that's a nice trick we did to uh, not, not to be forgotten and, and uh, to be easily remembered because when you put that in short, that will be like uh, CIG in Polish. Uh, it sounds like CIA, but anyway, uh, uh, this is what, what, what we do. We, we were born in 2010 uh, as a center uh, providing help mostly to investors. Uh, so whoever came, would come to the region uh, foreign or local investors, we would help them to identify uh, investment opportunities in terms of uh, uh, 
part of land uh, help with uh, the institutions. Then uh, our responsibilities grew because we grew as a baby. Uh, so we also uh, took on some responsibilities connected with promoting uh, exports from uh, West Pomerania abroad. And uh, the latest edition is uh, dated 2019 when uh, we changed our name uh, from uh, Center for um, uh, Investors Assistance uh, uh, into Center for Economic Initiatives because we took on board some responsibilities connected with the so-called uh, uh, smart specializations, uh, uh, also with uh, startups, uh, uh, with uh, cooperation between uh, business and um, high schools, universities. Uh, and uh, from that time on, we cover all those areas. So if you fall within any of these categories, you are more than welcome to contact us because we will be very privileged to help you. Uh, we are representing a beautiful region with access to the Baltic Sea, uh, with uh, the border uh, located on the border with Germany, uh, which gives us this uh, edge of, uh, you know, having the experience in international trade. Uh, we are not very densely populated because uh, for this area of 22,000 square kilometers, we have 1.7 million people, which means that for one square kilometer there are only 75 people so uh, you understand that we have a lot of beautiful areas not densely populated we have 3,000 lakes we have lots of nature uh, but i will continue about that a little bit later the biggest cities uh, that you can see uh, here uh, are headed by Szczecin. that's the capital of our region 403,000 uh, people. Then it's Koszalin, Stargard, Kołobrzeg, Świnoujście, and Goleniów is not mentioned here because it has uh, even uh, fewer people. Um, but it is also uh, one of those uh, towns which are uh, around Szczecin and which uh, uh, over the last few years have developed very quickly. Well, uh, just a brief look at the business environment. We have uh, 225,000 businesses. Uh, and that's good. It, that means that for this population, we are quite uh, entrepreneurial. But uh, the problem is that uh, most of these businesses, like 97%, would be employing between one and nine people, which is not that good because we lack big businesses. We don't have too many big businesses. We have a lot of uh, small and medium sized. Uh, as for the population of 1.7 million, we have quite a big group of working age population. Uh, we have almost 15, 1,500 businesses with foreign capital. Uh, we have 23 universities that's, that are all um, institutions of higher education. I will just mention them. I will just uh, mention the major uh, state-owned uh, universities in a while. Uh, all these universities uh, provide, uh, they, uh, they take care of almost 40,000 students and every year they provide uh, almost 10,000 graduates. Uh, these are the six main universities, uh, Pomeranian Medical University, a uh, very highly ranked university uh, according to the latest polls. Uh, then West Pomeranian University of Technology with a strong IT department, University of Szczecin, of course, uh, Marti Maritime University of Szczecin, educating not only sailors, but also IT uh, uh, professionals. Koshalin University of Technology and Academy of Art. These are the, the, the six main uh, state-owned uh, uh, universities. All of them have their own unique uh, inventions, unique patents. I just listed here a few examples of the universities uh, and, and their uh, the inventions. Uh, the strange noises that you can see in the background, uh, that's my dog who is having a terrible cough today. So apologies for that. I'm working from home and the dog is uh, really having <laughs> <laughs> a difficult time. Uh, what we are good at, uh, this is a, a nice picture with uh, regional specializations, which are in the middle of the circle. And on the outside, you, you can see the so-called intelligence specializations. What we are going to do uh, in the coming weeks is, uh, is a mix. We are going to, um, out of all these specializations, we are going to create fewer uh, and broader categories. And of course, IT has always its place within the, uh, at the moment, it's, it's called services of the future within the regional uh, specializations, uh, for example, for example, and, and of course, this will uh, continue uh, to be like that. Uh, exports. As you can see, uh, the major export destinations are listed at the bottom of the page, and Germany uh, makes up 
uh, around 30% of our exports from the region abroad. And so this is more or less the same as uh, in the uh, overall uh, balance sheet uh, of Poland. Uh, the rest of the export destinations are uh, mostly Scandinavian countries plus UK plus France. Uh, when it comes to the major products that we export, uh, you will see that uh, it's uh, timber and wood products. We have a strong representation of IKEA, but not only IKEA, some other companies that, uh, that are strong in timber and woods, but uh, 16% uh, in this, uh, in this um, uh, classification is uh, taken by ships, yachts and boats. Sometimes it happens that when there is a particularly good year for the shipbuilding industry, uh, then ships and yachts will be in the first place. Uh, when you have a look at the investors uh, and their uh, origins, uh, at the moment, the biggest group of investors is made up uh, by Danish uh, businesses. Uh, Danish investors are very, very uh, mobile and they are actually uh, widespread all over the uh, West Pomerania. You can, you can find them in any part of, of uh, the region, but uh, German investors are in the second place and then it's Sweden, Austria. The four major reasons why you should invest in West Pomerania, of course, it's the location, uh, uh, which, is, which has uh, so many advantages. Uh, together with transport availability, which means that you can reach the place uh, using any, any possible uh, means of transport. International community, which means that the, the, there are international investors here, NATO troops, etc., and all the infrastructure, as well as the manufacturing base. And uh, just for you to remember the uh, uh, mission of the West Pomeranian uh, self-government is that uh, West Pomerania should be the leader of blue and green growth, ensuring high quality of life for its residents. And speaking of the uh, green growth, uh, at the moment, 20% uh, of Poland's green energy production comes exactly from our region. But when it comes to uh, uh, the high standard of uh, life for, for the residents, uh, you can see that after hours, we have a, a whole variety of uh, entertainment and, and uh, forms of spending free time, like golf courses, marinas, sandy beaches, and lakes. We have almost 22% of legally protected areas with unique environmental value. Uh, we have the biggest number of overnight stays uh, in tourist accommodation in this region. And according to research, 85% of people in West Pomerania are happy with life. So welcome again to the world of the happy people. And so if you would like to contact me, uh, the easiest way is of course by email. That's very simple, that's CIG, like uh, the Center for Economic Initiatives in Polish. CIG is, is also nice to, to your ear at wzp.pl. That's, uh, that's the address. Thank you very much for the, giving me this opportunity to speak to you. And I would like to encourage you to contact us. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wojcikowski. It was really impressive presentation. I believe that we all didn't know uh, all of these issues regarding West Pomerania. So thank you very much. It's good to hear also this, that we have arm, armed arm right now, CAG. Uh, uh, let's say, as you mentioned, uh, I believe it would be hard to uh, live uh, from that approach. So uh, we are uh, happy with that also. Um, right now, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Alexander Buvelski. Uh, he represents today Brandenburg and Investor Center Uckermark. Uh, where he is a part of team running Innovation Campus Me Best. Correctly? Yes. Okay. So please, welcome. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. I'm here together with my team colleague, uh, Paulina Maliszewski. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we would like to tell you a little bit about uh, our project that we are working on. Uh, I know this is always difficult to, to, to make a presentation after Jacek Wojcikowski by, or, um, but, uh, in, but excuse me for my uh, Jenglish, Jenglish. <laughs> uh, Jacek ima 
uh, always makes show. But okay, I will try to do my best. Uh, we are representing Investor Center Ukemark, ICU. That's the company uh, that provides uh, assistance services for companies in Ukemark, but also for investor, investors that, uh, in Ukemark uh, invest. Uh, but, excuse me, I don't know why it's... But uh, what we want to talk about is not about ICU, Investor Center Ukemark, but about our project. Our project is Innovation Campus Me Best. And why is so strange name? Me Best is a short name from Metropolitan Berlin Stettin. And uh, uh, that is why, because we want to connect uh, investors, connect startups from both cities, from Berlin and from Szczecin. So we would like to, to make this connection direct in the middle, so in Schwedt. Uh, I would like to show you uh, where are we. Uh, I, I know that uh, everybody knows uh, a little bit geography, but we would like to show that we are very close to Szczecin. It's only one hour by car. Uh, we have 18 train connections per day. And for those people there, uh, very, very sustainable uh, are, it's only 10 hours walk. So you can feel it. Innovation Campus in Best, uh, as I uh, told you, we are together in team uh, with Pauline Maliszewski and uh, myself, Alexander Bwelski. Uh, what we would like in uh, Innovation Campus uh, to make or to create. We would like to make similar project, a little bit similar to Technopark Pomerania in Szczecin, uh, where ICT cluster placed. That's the place where we uh, can, uh, where uh, business and science can meet, uh, where we start up uh, inviting, uh, when we laboratory uh, plan, uh, where business can also innovative product uh, develop. Uh, we are uh, want to uh, a little bit focused on a uh, few topics, process engineering, bioeconomy, chemistry, IT and hydrogen. Why we have uh, chosen these uh, topics? Uh, because uh, we have a basis uh, in Schwedt. Basis, uh, what I mean, this is industry, existing industry. And this industry we have already on board. Uh, this is, this is uh, among others, uh, LIPA, paper manufacturer, uh, over 170 years of history, more than 1,000 employees, uh, this is uh, PCK, one of the biggest, 10 biggest raffiner, raffinery in Europe. Also more than 1,000 employees. This is Verbio, biofuel and technology company with more than 200 employees. But we have connection to Poland, Empower Technology, the company, uh, the startup in Szczecin, from Szczecin, uh, based on uh, ZUD. Technische Uni Stettin. Uh, Empower is focused on hydrogen technology. We have on board also Fraunhofer Institute, well known in Germany, but also in Poland. Uh, we have a university from Eberswalde, and we are looking for Polish partners from Szczecin, from universities, but also from companies. Uh, what is our goal? We would like to connect uh, Berlin uh, and Stettin in Schwedt, uh, in the middle, what I uh, meant. We would like to join German-Polish training programs for professionals, especially for IT sector. Maybe we can create German-speaking staff for companies from Stettin. And uh, last but not least, 
we would like to offer work-life balance, which is possible in shared. This is not only the place where you can develop itself, but you can live and work in shared. This is short presentation from me. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Alexander. So we've got our uh, entities participating in the project presenting, uh, presented. Mm, it's very motivating that we have such a strong and uh, encouraging partners. So I'm uh, very happy with that. And right now I would like to invite uh, for pitches and the discussion. Please excuse me just for a second, because mm -hmm. Alexander Stock from Vitano would like to announce something. Ah, okay. Alexander, yes, please. Yeah, just very shortly, uh, I would announce also the second workshop who starts at uh, 3.30. And please keep in mind that we changed the platform. So uh, you should uh, step out here and Zoom, and then following the link you get uh, to pick the button, and there we will we held the second workshop. And uh, yeah, uh, there will, you will get uh, a lot of presentations regarding di digitalization and also some uh, opportunities for international cooperation. Um, so uh, we would be really pleased if we can welcome you also at the second workshop. Okay, great. Alexander, can you? Uh, then uh, put the link to the second part also via our chat right now. Yeah, I will do it. Okay, great. Uh, thank you very much then. Hmm? And uh, only small re remark uh, my side, uh, I encourage everybody to exchange email addresses also via our chat so that we have uh, uh, contacts from the very uh, scratch. And uh, I believe that we will revert back to this issue how to uh, simplify and facilitate cooperation between ourselves uh, within this project. Uh, it's tasks for uh, all of us. Uh, okay, so right now I would like to welcome Przemysław Krzywania from EBKF, a uh, company located in uh, Poland, uh, Szczecin or Dobra. Przemysław will describe it more precisely, I believe. Uh, right now we will have this part with pitches and discussion and uh, Przemysław is is first in the row. Welcome. Uh, hi, welcome. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, that's nice. So, uh, as Rafa, can you see my screen? I share it also. Is it correct or no? I see it. Okay. So, if you see my screen with presentation, so once more, good morning. My name is Przemysław Krzywania. I know it can be hard to pronounce, especially for people in Germany. Uh, so I'm the CEO of the I2M company. Uh, we are a software house. We are based in Szczecin. Uh, our headquarters is in a small village, a few kilometers outside from the Szczecin. But we are mainly located in Szczecin. We nowadays work mainly in Szczecin. So as I2M, we are a software house. Uh, we are specializing in a few things. It's mobile applications, web solutions, and business application. We are also uh, focusing on digitalization of company and business processes. And we are also making an, some kind of payment and loyalty applications, especially mobile applications and web applications. Our second mark uh, brand, as uh, Rafał said, is uh, EPKF. Uh, EPKF uh, is a part of our company, and we are focusing there on IoT. Uh, especially on industrial IoT and Industry 4.0. Uh, we are mainly monitoring the de devices and machines. Uh, what are the machines doing? What are the efficiency of the machines, the parameters, alerts, etc. And also we are making some kind of uh, GPS monitoring. And we are of course open uh, for cooperation with German companies and institutions. And if you are interested, please just contact me. And I think it's all from me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Przemysław. Uh, it was uh, very sportly, uh, motivating. 
Uh, right now, I would like to uh, welcome Mr. Mario Kukowski for uh, then uh, GmbH. I believe we had an opportunity already to meet with Mr. Kukowski here in Szczecin in Technopark a few years ago uh, via uh, an event organized also with support of uh, Haus der Wirtschaft und uh, Industrie und Handelskammer. Uh, welcome. Mr. Mario? Hello? Mm -hmm. There are some problems with the connection. Unfortunately, I cannot see Mr. Mario uh, on the list. So I guess we can start with presentation of Patrick Yannick. Absent solutions, okay. Of course. Patrick, you are with us? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Um, please let me know if you can see the presentation. Yes, very well. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Patrick Janik. I would represent today Absent Solutions. Uh, mostly, we are a new software development company from Poland, uh, from Szczecin. We are focusing on mobile and web application de delivery only. And here is some boring technological stuff that we, uh, stack that we are using to, to deliver those applications to the end market. Um, and I would like to uh, tell you um, a bit how small companies can co cooperate in this entire mechanism. So at, at the beginning, we, we have the process and normally we um, when we start the cooperation with uh, different countries, companies, then we gather requirements and create some list of what we would like to achieve uh, by creating web and mobile application. Then we create designs of such ap uh, application if, if it is mobile or web. Then we code it with uh, previously showed uh, technologies. We test it. And at the end, we deploy it to the end market to be available for end customer. We are focusing mostly on the prototype uh, creation. So our goal is to uh, gather the startup uh, environment people around us and deliver them um, MVP, minimum valuable product to the market. We do it in average uh, from one to three months and then those startups can test their application uh, with the final outcome um, to the um, with the end customers and additionally we can augment your team if you would like to additionally we are um, also a community so we um, you, you can find us uh, on conferences we share our knowledge uh, as a prelegants like for example here uh, in Szczecin um, on reaction, reaction conference. Additionally, we are a co-organizator of IT Wednesday, uh, where people uh, from around IT can meet and talk freely about everything. Additionally, we uh, we have co-organized a uh, Hack the Beat Hackathon too. So, uh, so we are also in the hack hackathon space. Uh, to, um, you can find us also on the social medias and we share knowledge on our blog, we share our solution on uh, code solution on GitHub, so you can even use uh, some part of our work in your solutions too. If you would like to feel free to contact me, thank you for attention. Okay, great. Thank you very much, especially for this uh, open approach with GitHub. Uh, do we have Mario Kukowski on board already? Yes, I saw. Yes, he changed the system. He's now available. Okay. Um, so you are ready? I correctly understood? No. Okay. So we'll uh, go forward. Welcome, uh, Jan. Jan Filipowiak is from Pixel Legend. Uh, awarded developer of virtually special remote meeting software and producer of games in VR and AR. Uh, welcome, Jan. Hello, hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I will share a screen with you. Uh, one second. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see it. Yes. Okay. So it's nice to be here again. I'm, I'm Jan, and uh, I'm going to just say a few words about Pixel Legend and uh, what we do. We're a virtual and augmented reality company uh, that's located in Szczecin. And uh, we also have uh, some business activity in Berlin. Uh, we mainly specialize in tools that are evolving around the uh, technologies of visualization, especially virtual and augmented reality, everything that's using 3D. Uh, we're writing our own software, which is uh, working uh, uh, right now uh, as a beta version. It's called Virtualist. And Virtualist is, uh, is a tool that allows you to meet remotely uh, online, invite each other, and uh, uh, see each other in a huge or small 3D scene that you can share with others and you know solve your spatial 3D problems together. Uh, it allows project managers to quickly, efficiently reduce uh, the traditional communications from say one week to two hours of effective session. Uh, this is our main product, but we also work on uh, different tools uh, like virtual domes, uh, for example, for clients like DHL. Uh, this is a video player that uh, allows to play virtual reality movies on, on the wall of huge domes and small domes. Uh, our products were featured on the MIT Hub Week. For example, we did a job for the Boston Globe and they used our dome for presentation of the history of the newspaper. So we sold a license to IBM and they used it uh, to visualize their system, their cloud uh, security system and on CBIT. So we also have an experience to work with public uh, partners like the city of Stettin, where we deployed a virtual dome uh, app for the uh, city, uh, city dwellers and citizens to design their own version of the city. It was interactive. So we had 6,000 visitors who saved 300 versions of their city. Uh, we, have, we have an extensive experience working with uh, schools and public universities on common joint projects uh, where we applied together for, for grants and public, public uh, funds. This is an example with the Academy of Art in Stettin. Uh, we also worked with Krakow and the history Museum of Krakow, where we, we, we achieved the first Polish uh, uh, Horizon uh, grant directly from the European Union. So we have a public partners, like with the West Pomerania and Brussels, we had a very successful uh, public stance. So it's really, it's really a multitude of the projects that you can see on our website like the uh, multiplayer systems for the Oculus Rift, the latest version. So it's, it's, it's hard to sum up you know, a few years of our work together, but if you want to know more, I'm happy to share experience and uh, talk with you. I'm leaving my email here at the end and I'm happy to help. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jan. Uh, I, I heard that we have on board uh, Mario Kokowski uh, on board already. So please, Mario, right now the floor, the floor is yours. So thank you very much and uh, sorry for, for being late. And I have an, an echo on, on my uh, some on, on my uh, headset. Anyway. Um, so uh, I'm representing the the company DEN, and uh, I would like to share this uh, presentation right now. So uh, so. You can see this. Yes. 
Okay. So um, um, we we are working in the in the engineering field, and we are uh, a company which is engineering uh, 5G networks, fiber optic networks, uh, microwave networks, and for uh, transport and access uh, networks. So on on here on on left hand you you can see uh, what what we are doing there uh, from uh, from link engineering to uh, pre-planning uh, parameter planning that means ip planning and so on um, and also the the backbone and backhaul planning for for the 5g network um, second uh, we are engaged in FTTX networks, fiber to the node or fiber to the home you heard about. Uh, and there we are covering the, the whole uh, uh, process uh, line from the very scratch from Greenfield uh, uh, up to documentation. Uh, third, you see the our VLAN engagement where we have planned uh, large projects, for example, in Lutherstadt Wittenberg, uh, where we had a network of around about 300 VLAN uh, hotspots. Um, and last but not least, uh, I would like to put the end your attention to the 5G planning, where we have uh, uh, project experience already for uh, so-called campus nets, campus networks. That means uh, private networks for industry, for healthcare, or for uh, uh, private user, but also in the public area. Okay, so where, what are we doing? Uh, and then with an example of a of a of a site, and uh, from coming from from the uh, fiber optic networks, the, um, here we are uh, in, in the planning area and also in the turnkey uh, uh, projects, and then later on here is the, the whole site that may show the kind of different kind of antennas for access nets. And for transport net, when uh, fiber optic networks are not available. And here we are planning the whole punch uh, of tasks, except this uh, civil works uh, engineering. We are focused on telecommunication and IT and also router planning and so on. And yeah. And uh, here is another example for uh, for an uh, fiber optic network um, um, for a, in a project area here nearby to to Greifswald. Um, some some customer uh, we we worked for um, the the first uh, E plus is already not not available. They merged with with uh, O2 Telefonica. Um, and uh, all the other are quite big companies, you, you know, and also we worked uh, for uh, Polish uh, Telecom um, when, when they established their first uh, transport network there. Then we worked uh, in close cooperation with, with Ericsson company. And last but not least, it is uh, an, an upcoming uh, uh, point of interest of our customer uh, that uh, we are also involved in, in dismantling of, of uh, mobile networks. Uh, so when, when you have in mind that uh, 2G and 3G uh, will, will, uh, um, will be deleted in, in the, in the uh, near future. Okay, uh, not only planning, also some... Uh, uh, um, uh. Broadband networks are very important uh, in the uh, uh, Macron Forpon region. So we've got now partner for that. Mm, okay, 
Uh, before Magda shall summarize prospects and next steps uh, regarding the project, okay. yeah. I would like to ask you all whether uh, any of you have any kind of consideration, remarks, ideas uh, following our today's meeting at this part before the second part. I've inserted uh, via chat uh, this information that maybe it would be good to uh, think about uh, any kind of tool that could facilitate exchange between us. Uh, I, I see that we have got many IT companies on board, so that shall not be very challenging. Uh, I, do, I don't think about the direction that we shall um, develop any new kind of tool, but maybe use something that we use all. Uh, it's uh, one idea from my side. Maybe add any other ideas? No, just just a big thank you to everybody. So when I saw our, our, both our agendas, I felt a little bit uh, wow at the weekend. I thought, my God, this is this will be a very long meeting, and I have to do some emails in between. But actually, I did maybe just two SOS uh, emails. You know that. Sorry. But yeah. I, I was really astonished and really, uh, wow, cool, very short and sharp. And, and I heard very many new things, met and, and saw new people. Mm. Uh, wow, cool. I, I Thank you. Congratulations. Good program and very also dif different pr presentations. Wow. My feeling, really. Great. Yeah. Thank you for your feedback then. Mm. Okay, so if there's no additional questions, I think I can start with some uh, summarize and just I would like to show you the key points of uh, and the, yeah, the next steps of the project. So, but first of all, I would like to thank all of you and I'm, I'm very glad to meet you and to create this space for um, today's uh, networking. Uh, I think that all of the presentations uh, have shown so far many perspectives um, for cooperation for, um, I mean, cross-border cooperation and also uh, the chance, it was the chance to find out uh, more uh, about operating areas of organizations supporting cross-border cooperation. Uh, and also I can, I can see some um, opportunities to how to combine ICT competences to, to start uh, cross-border uh, cooperation. So let me uh, briefly show you the next activities which are scheduled uh, at the project. So I would like to share with you my screen. Almost, it is almost done. Okay, is it visible? I guess I have to- it, Yes, we see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, when it comes to next uh, activities, uh, we plan to organize uh, two workshops in April. Uh, the first one uh, in the middle of April is going to be about uh, business culture uh, in Germany, some inter uh, intercultural uh, differences. And uh, at the end of April, uh, we are going to uh, organize workshop um, focus on uh, marketing activities in Germany. And uh, the last workshop is going to be uh, in May uh, and it's going to be um, focused on designing cross-border services. Uh, so please feel invited uh, to participate in uh, these workshops. And uh, as I told you at the beginning, the, the main result of the project is going to be uh, the concept for the cooperation, um, the ebook containing uh, contact to all organizations, some advice how to how to start, how to develop uh, cross-border cooperation, uh, and also um, some knowledge, some tips, uh, how to um, design cross-border uh, services. So, um, yeah, so that's the end of my short presentation. Uh, thank you so much from atten uh, from, from your, for your attention. And uh, maybe, uh, do you have any additional questions? So. Uh, feel free to ask me, me or Rafael, or anybody else. So one 
one question from from my side the, the presentations um, are sharing by 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 the project partners to to the email address or to a to a sharepoint uh, yes i'm going to share the the old presentations with you via email okay fine then uh, i will send it to alexander my presentation so so you have it and then yes, to, to share yeah and i will prepare it okay thanks we are a little bit ahead of time unexpectedly um it's uh, also good uh, good uh, um, good approach uh, if there are no any other questions then maybe we have uh, more time for tea coffee or something to eat in between uh, or anybody would like to share his uh, perspective, comments? Okay, great. So um, I'm also um, impressed by all these presentations. Uh, it was uh, very good to, to hear them all. And uh, I believe that we shall work on that, uh, what to do uh, in the next steps. Okay, Magda? Okay, so the, if there is no questions, I guess uh, we are going to have a 30 minutes break and uh, we start again at half past three uh, and this that that's going to be the Vitanos part. Uh, but please remember to use another link which uh, has been already sent to you on the chat. Excuse me if I could just say something. I was an active member of this uh, meeting, but uh, to be honest, I'm really um, well, it's actually a bigger expectation than I thought. It's the, the, the meeting is really nice. I think uh, I think it's going to be very um, very good beginning of the cooperation between our um, uh, colleagues across the border between us, and I think that's a very good start we're just having. Uh, and I'm really impressed. Some of the uh, uh, presentation were were, were really uh, really impressive. Um, other than that, I believe uh, we've got a contact on the emails and uh, I believe Magda and Rafa uh, are going to be a medium to do, to, uh, for, for our communication. I just want to um, just want to thank you uh, for, for that meeting. It was really nice, really nice. Okay, great. Thank you for that feedback. Thank you all. Uh, I encourage everybody to drop uh, uh, emails uh, via our chat, as Magda said. And uh, yeah, have a good lunch. Just just a short comment. Um, we have all email addresses from all who are registered via the uh, web page. For those who are not registered, and uh, if they would like to get uh, the uh, link to the recording and uh, to the presentation, just uh, re register yourself uh, at the web page then you will add to the uh, participant list and you can easily get uh, all this information via email. Yeah, that's a great idea, Alexander. Thank you for that information. And I have already sent it, sent the link to you. So please register yourself once again. Yeah. Okay. Now it's done. 30, 32 or 33 participants are still registered. And those who are not registered, it would be nice if they can register themselves, then they are on the list and they will get all the information about the workshops. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you so much for, for the meeting. And I guess we are we are all uh, going to have a, a lunch break. Yeah. Thank you and bye. We see us. Thank you. Bye bye.